Uh, my turn next. I'm John Gutile. I will play the uh, Chopin Waltz uh, Opus 62, number two in C sharp minor.
So now we're going to have Brianna play. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear okay. you just great. Okay, I'm going to play the Rondo Capriccioso, the first, the first two pages. Could you repeat that a little bit and get a little closer to the mic? I'm going to play the Mendelssohn Opus 14, the first two pages of Rondo Capriccioso, an E major. Okay. Oops, Brianna? Brianna? Did you turn on original sound? Uh, let me check. Yeah, because it sounded choppy. And we know you don't play that way. <laughs> Oops, the volume is off. Okay, can you hear? Yeah. Can I go again? Yes, that's better. Thank you.
Thank you. And we'll now switch to Diana Gao. Yes, we hear you. Uh, hello, I'm Diana Gao. I'll be playing uh, the Chopin Bluff number three in A flat major. Or Diane, it sounds uh, it doesn't have your usual high quality sound. Is uh, original sound turned on? Yes, it is turned on. I did hear some background noise, though. I can't hear it again. Yeah. 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 It's better, but you know, I wonder because the, usually you have beautiful sound when you play f at recitals for us. But today, the sound is not nearly as good. I guess it's okay. I mean, it, it's, it sounds okay. I guess it's, yeah, go ahead then. Sorry. Yeah. Lulu. No. Yes. Lulu, can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I think we have a major problem. Every single piano sounds the same. There are no dynamics at all. Nobody is playing softly, even on two notes. They cannot even to make a two note slur. I think the internet is just sabotaging everyone's playing. Could be. That's what I think. Yeah. Well. I think that this master class, I mean, I will try my best to make comments. But for example, for example, when you just play, play me only the melody like this, darling, and play pianissimo. Let me hear you do this. Okay. I suppose it's yeah, it's it's the playing. It's not the internet. There are no soft. <laughs> uh oh. There's there's <laughs> we, no fra there's no phrasing going on. Look here. Once again, we play. I'm gonna play it for you. All right. Listen. Am I playing pianissimo, Lulu, or not? Yes. Ironically, uh, Seymour, your sound now is much better than when we tested it earlier, and Diana's sound is not as good, even though we know she's a very good pianist, just like the rest of the group. But it does sound choppy. Now look here, just play like this. Now lift your wrists up to the, go up to the ceiling. Look, watch me, watch me. When you go up, the hammers go down more slowly and the sound will be much softer. So go down, look. Watch me again. I'm going down on the sea, and I'm floating up. Show me that. There, okay. 
Now I can give the master class. Okay, so no, Diana I, will pay. You know, I wasn't sure because every single pianist, I've never heard anyone play a single soft sound. Whoa, that's quite a statement. Okay, we'll let Diana finish her ballad, and then we'll have you start the okay, master no, class. Okay, no, no more now. Just play me the ballad, and we'll discuss everything later. Okay.
Okay, um, Seymour, due to the technical difficulties, I would like to ask Brianna to play her two pages again, and hopefully it will sound better. Can you hear it? Yeah. yeah. I'm still working on that. Part. It back All right, now what did you do to the sound that made it sound better? Lulu? Can you hear me? Which one? Lulu? Yes. Can you? Toward me? Okay. Can you hear yeah, me? I hear now? you. I hear okay. you. What did you say? We turned what off this to... microphone by the piano when uh, Diane and Brianna were playing. That oh, well, cut out the echo. Infinitely better. Thank you. A, little, a somewhat late discovery, but better late than never, as they say. Now, can all the students hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can think all, we can all hear you, Seymour. Thank you. Are you, you everyone is there? Well, there are two of us here, and then there's two uh -oh. elsewhere. Yeah, 
Oh, and there is the music that how wonderful, how wonderful. Okay, so now can we now proceed with the master class? Please, yes. Please. Okay. So now so now uh, Barbara should go to the piano. There's a great height discrepancy between John and I. <laughs> so a little bench adjustment here. Is Barbara at the piano now? Yes, I am. Okay. Now you see that figure uh, on the monitor, the quarter note followed by two dots of the repeated note. On the right hand, yes. That's a very familiar attitude of Schubert. He does that very often. For example, in the fantasy, the C major fantasy. See, the impetus goes on the first note. And then the next two notes just die away from the impetus. So whenever that figure comes in music, it's usually played the same way. See, you're riding on the sound of the first note. Now you listen to it dying, and you follow two. So now, Barbara, can you concentrate on the first note? Listen to it dying and match the ember. If you can do that, you can play this impromptu. I see that your teacher wrote a diminuendo there. Let's hear, let's hear you do it. Let's hear you do it, Barbara. Okay. Oh, now that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now listen, Barbara, every theme has an afterthought. Just like a, mu just like a sentence when we speak. For example, we're trying to get the sound of the piano to sound beautiful so that we can have a successful master class. So the part, so we can have a successful master class, that's an afterthought. So, you know, every theme has an afterthought, even in a Bach subject. Afterthought. So the afterthought on this opening theme is the second bar. See that? That's the afterthought. Now the music proceeds in a very interesting way. It's related very much to mathematics in terms of numbers, because for example, the number three plays a great role in interpreting music. When the composer, but not all the time, but when the composer has a four measure idea, usually the third measure is the loudest. So we're going to put it to the test in this impromptu. I'm going to speak the numbers. One, two, and here's the third, which is supposed to be the loudest. And the fourth is the softest. going to put it together. 
and the four measures now are fused together in a beautiful phrase. So before you play this theme, you should know which note is going to be the loudest. This note that has a slur on it, that's where you're going to aim. Now, Barbara, play the theme now. My turn. Barbara, now, Barbara, you sound like a different pianist now. <laughs> a totally different pianist. <laughs> now, tell me something. Are you against using the soft pedal? Um, no, I'm actually addicted to it. But on my piano and on John's piano, I'm a little afraid of it. It changes the, tim the, the tone so much that I sort of stepped away. Oh, what a shame. It's not adjusted properly. Oh, no, it probably is. It's just, it's just my ears not used to it. No, the piano is fabulous. It's, it, and it wants to be quiet on its own. So I thought I would just work towards okay. the touch doing okay. it. Okay. Will you put your foot over the soft pedal? Sure. And will you do me a favor? Yes. When you get to the second measure, uh -huh. put the soft pedal down. Okay. And take it off again. And especially when you play the fourth measure, put the soft pedal back again. Okay. Can I hear how it sounds? Sure. That's gorgeous. Now, can you do the same thing with the octaves? Continue. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. I'm just looking at it, trying to think if it really it followed. Yeah, it does. It's okay. going to follow the same pattern. Of course. <laughs> Barbara, I, you can't believe how differently you play now. <laughs> now, do you see the where the octave section is, the third measure? Yes. Do you see the hairpin opening and closing? Yes. Now, that's something brand new in music. <laughs> By the way, Lulu, did you send everybody the, yes. the, the, the information about hairpins? About expanding. Okay, you got it. So now when it's open and closing hairpins, mm -hmm. that means only one thing, rubato. Not volume at all. Where the hairpin opens, you're to slow down. And when it closes, you're to recover the mm -hmm. tempo. And now here's what's interesting. They no longer mean dynamics. However, that is the third bar, mm -hmm. and your choice of dynamics is going to be forte there. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the G. Uh -huh. But when you did it the first time, you didn't wait so long. This time, Schubert wants you to make a rubato. So now you're going to wait and, uh, and, and delay the G. But you see, that's a vocal thing because that's a big interval there, right? Right. 
there's a new big interval of a fourth going there. So he wants you to take time. So now start the octaves, do the same thing that you did, only play rubato on the third bar. Okay? And then okay. put your soft pedal down for the fourth, fourth bar. Let me hear. Uh-huh, but you didn't do it enough here. On those repeated eighth notes, you went like this. You have to do it gradually. Got it. Right, I just leaned into the G only. Okay, I'll try again. Now, Barbara, here's a little hint. In all of musical interpretation, we have always to exaggerate what it is that we're trying to do. Because somehow our emotional world gets in the way and we think we're overdoing it, but we never do it enough. Now turn it on even more. Play the octave section. I got into it, but <laughs> we just went well, the wrong you place. Were, you were doing great. Now, come on, do oh. it again. Do it again. <laughs> Phew. No, 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 this was stop, stop. The second bar was not an afterthought. Okay. No, not enough, not enough, not soft enough. Oh, now, now, are you against making soft sounds like that? I, not as a principle, no. <laughs> now, listen, Barbara, when you play like that, you break everyone's heart. Hmm. Schubert is the most intimate of all the composers. Don't fail to play sounds like that. Do the octaves again. This the second thing. Okay. No, no, you see this one. Hear this B flat. The next note has to be softer. I got it. Okay. It can't be like this. It has to be like this. Okay. Bravo. And this wasn't loud enough. That climax wasn't loud enough. Now, so look, considering from the beginning of the piece, that G is the loudest note from the beginning. Right. Do the octaves again and go to really fulfillment on that G. Okay. Bravo, bravo. All right, now I have something very interesting to share with you and all the students. Do you see on measure 10? 
tell the audience what word you see on measure 10. Oh, decrescendo for 11. That's right. correct. And now look at the last measure before the next variation and tell the audience what you see. Oh, diminuendo. Tell me something, Barbara. Have you ever seen any composer using a decrescendo and diminuendo in the same piece? Schubert. <laughs> because they mean the same. Why is they doing that? Why is Schubert doing that? I think decrescendo just... and, and diminuendo mean the same thing. It means to get softer. Not in Schubert's world, I don't think so. And so what does it mean in Schubert's world? I think it's kind of like the hairpins where decrescendo is more of a time element and diminuendo is more of a dynamic. Or do I have it backwards? Well, no, the decrescendo definitely means to get softer. No question about it. Okay. And diminuendo definitely means to get softer also. So now I'm going to tell you and, and all the students and everybody listening, because this only occurred around 15 years ago. Can you imagine? Schubert died in the 1800s, and we only found out the secret about 15 years ago. The editor that came out with the new edition of Schubert was playing chamber music one day. And he always wondered why Schubert used those same two words. And he came to the word diminuendo. And four bars later, he saw the answer. Schubert wrote a tempo. Aha. So here is the answer. Whenever you see decrescendo, it means to get softer. But every time you see diminuendo, it means to get softer and retard. And Schubert is the only composer who has that. Isn't that fascinating? Absolutely. Okay. So now would you turn to the very end of the piece? You see the Pew Lento? See, I don't think you got slow enough after oh. all the turmoil of those scale passages. <laughs> but Barbara, you have a phenomenal technique. It's marvelous. Your technique is absolutely marvelous. If you would in, 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 involve yourself with a dynamic on every single note, you'll be a winner when you play the piano. The thing is that if you analyze what you did for me when you played before, almost every note was on the same dynamic level. Mm -hmm. But perfect technique. Your technique is marvelous. So now when you get to the end, it's very serious. And you see the fermata at the end of here? See that? Mm -hmm. Now, guess who told us the secret of Fermata? Beethoven. In his Sonata Opus 109, he has... Um... No, 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 not, not Opus 109. No, this is the story about his discussion with Cherney. I got the, the, the Fermata story all mixed up. He told Cherney, who was his pupil, every time you see a Fermata in my music, always make a retard, even when I don't write it down. 
In other words, you never come to a screeching halt in Beethoven. And guess what, Barbara? That applies to all music that was ever written. Every time you see a fermata, always make a retard. So I would like you to play that measure leading into the pulento. And wait. And now here comes the, 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 the mode of heavy and light. Heavy and light. Heavy and light. Now Schubert is doing a fast one. On the measure at the theme, when the piece opens, mm -hmm. that measure is, is the afterthought, right? Right. He goes the other way. Now he's making it the whole point. Right. See, he's going to a tortondo. So let's go. Now, Barbara, what is this touch called when there's a slur and dots? Do you know what that touch is called? Portato. Portato. So now there are two theories about portato. There's the pianist who does this. And there's a pianist who does that with the pedal. And I belong to that group. The second group. Yes, because the other group, the other sound, if the composer just has plain notes without a slur, they're going to be detached so you can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So I think all portados are with legato pedal. Like Beethoven's fourth concerto. So come. Let me hear you do that. Just that? Okay. Sorry, I can't start there, right? Bravo. Now continue. Soft pedal. We're going to make a little crescendo to the sforzando. Let's hear that. Bravo. I could have lingered longer. And that. now the third measure is going to be the loudest. And now the soft pedal goes down again. Now first, can I hear you do this, please? Hear the sixteenth note, the thirty second note. Let me hear you do that. Okay. <clears throat> now I tell all of my pupils to sin, and I'm going to tell you to sin. To sin? Every time you see a dotted note, Always pick your hand off and put the pedal down. Now watch my hand. Watch my hand on the piano. Can you see my hand on the piano? Yes. Oh, 
That's nice. <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, wait. Ah, so much to think about. Barbara? <laughs> Barbara? Yes. Look at me. I am. Can you see me? Oh, I am. I am looking at you. Sorry, I'm looking at you on the screen, which makes me feel like I'm looking I at you. I want to give you a huge congratulations. You respond. Uh. You responded in such a way. I never ever thought that you had that within you. Oh. The sentiment of Schubert, and it's pouring out of you. I Took want to help. just party, heartiest congratulations. Thank That's you. all we're going to do on this piece. You know, okay. we could work on every single note, but there's no time. I, I can see that. Before I leave, I do really quickly want to tell you that I have followed you for decades. I, I actually have a book report that's dated October 4th, 1988, that I wrote on with your own two hands for my pedagogy class. And you helped me through my senior recital. You have inspired me as a teacher and a player. And I don't know if you always know the impact you have on people's lives. Oh, I'm so flattered. Thank you, Barbara. So now the next one was the, the Chopin waltz? Yes. Okay. Now, John, you see the notation in the Chopin waltz? You see yes. this little rest? If we put the pedal off there, we lose the bass note, correct? Right. See if we do this. Now listen, I'm going to, I'm going to solve the problem. Hear the bass note? Listen to the bass note. Tim, it's sounding. So now you see the B sharp of the chord in the left hand? See the B sharp? We're gonna take that B sharp with the thumb of the right hand. Can I hear you do this? No, but the grace note, you see the grace note has a slash through it. That means that it's very fast, almost together. Okay, now let go of everything except the B sharp. Okay, now, now put the pedal down. Take off the pedal and stop. Okay, now this is now look here, John. This is a very common problem here that little grace note you're having that's that's the thing that's holding back the passage when you have a, a slash through the grace note that's actually you're supposed to play it together you see the ear can't hear a second together so when you play it together it's perfect
Can I hear you do that? No, great. Can I, let me hear you here do this. Play one, two, three, four notes all together. Oh, we now play exactly like that. Okay, now put the pedal. Play the left hand alone, G sharp, and only D sharp and G sharp. We're not playing the B sharp anymore, see? So let me hear the pedaling like this. Pedal, off, down. Off, yes, and then down. And here too. Now that can, you can reach this, see? You can reach that. But you have to make the rest. Want me to try it? No, I'm doing something for you. The E is disappearing, going off into the ether waves, and I'm going to match the next note with it. So. Hear that? So John, here is what's up. Playing the piano is playing an instrument where every note is always dying. You know, we play any note on the piano, it's dying. It's dying. There's nothing that we can do about it. So playing the piano is a series of illusions. So it's very helpful when we follow the note that's dying and match the dying ember with the next note. But when we make a crescendo, we have to do it with the accompanying voices because the melody is always dying, right? So when we're making a diminuendo, it's very useful to have that problem. So let me hear you go to the D sharp beautifully now. Yeah, and it's not. The dynamic is like this. And not. Not like that, but. Let me hear you do this. Nope, at all. No, this has to be louder. Uh-huh. Yes. 
Now you see the hairpin opening? Mm -hmm. That's a little kind of rubato. <laughs> third beat. And you see the hairpin opening there? Mm -hmm. It means to linger and go ahead. us to delay that third beat. Auto sign right here. See, we have to slow down and then recover. from here. Okay, now can you do it twice as much here? To exaggerate it. Hey, John, hey, John, that was sensational. That was really very impressive. Now, look, I want to make a technical suggestion on this section. Now, you see the fourth finger? Not up there, huh? The first fourth finger goes from left to right, and now it has to go from right to left. You've had these for how long? Two weeks? Uh, say, or even half? And they're all hard as rock. What's so, happened? Hello? Yeah, we're still here. It was some other participant. I think they weren't muted. Oh, John, can you see the keyboard? Can you see my hand? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Now, watch me, watch me. What is that motion that I'm making? So you're turning your wrist kind of out and back. It's a cold rotation. All right. 
Now, rotation means the forearm. Look, it's only the forearm, not the elbow, only the forearm. Now, can I see you do this for me? That's correct, with the finger, with the finger. Now, the thing about rotation is the finger leads the arm, get it? The finger itself is leading the arm. Okay. Do it, do it. Okay. Okay, now make it invisible. Make it invisible. Bravo, bravo. Okay. And by the way, you're this is sensational what you're doing. That was sensational. Your scales were perfect. Now we're going to work on the middle section because the left hand is getting in the way of the right. Now, the, all of music is built from the bass up. So we need the bass note, but the chords are going to be like this. Wonderful. And now the right hand goes right down to the key bed, to the bottom of every key. Bass note is always there. John, you can't do this. You can't go over a beautiful melody like this. See, that can't work. That's not, that doesn't mean anything. Maybe something like that. That's part of the romantic tradition. Let's hear this. Now pull away from the F. Delay the F. Delay it even more. Okay, now from here. Beginning. 
Let's hear the whole thing now. No, 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 that was boring. That was boring. <laughs> good, good. All right. I'll get it right this time. I know you will. Okay, thank you. No, no, not nearly, no, not nearly enough. It wasn't slow enough and it wasn't soft enough. That's fine. And the rest is the same. Bravo for you. And you know, your technique here is marvelous. It's wonderful, really. It's just that the rotation will help that fourth finger. Okay. That's all Thank I you. wanted to tell you. All right. Thanks. Now we have we have the uh, the Ronda Caprizioso. Where is Brianna? Hi. There she is. Hi, darling. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So now, did you straighten out your your problems in your dormitory? Things are all right there now. Yeah, I'm I'm moving to a new place. Oh, oh, that's good. Now look here, you know what voicing a chord means, don't you? If somebody asks you to voice a chord, what does that mean? Um. So you have to highlight a certain note in the chord? It, it means to bring out certain tones of the chord. So the upper note of the chord over here has to sound like a melody. It has to sound like this. Now, do you see the hairpin over those group of notes? See the yeah. hairpin is opening and closing? That's a rubato sign. Watch. Very sentimental. Can I hear you only play the bass and the melody? I heard you bang the E, the B, and that's the note that has to be the softest. No, listen, you're going. You're banging the last two notes. They're the softest. Can I hear you do this first? I'm going to tell you a little secret. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Okay. 
we do, and when we play the piano in order to get the full dynamic possibilities of the piano, we don't lower the keys all the way down to the bottom of the key. Sometimes we only lower the key halfway down. Look here, I'm going to lower the key halfway down. Right here. Let me hear you lower the key halfway down. That's right, that's right. Again? Now put the pedal down and do. do. Put the pedal down. No, listen to your last note, honey. Do you hear you're banging the last note? The last note's going to be the softest. Yes, yes. Now, now, now play the whole thing now and do that for me. down keep the pedal down well when you say halfway down is it like yeah until it sounds until it sounds that's the girl that's the girl now it, now brianna if you do that and you take your right hand and you go down to the bottom of the key you're gonna have a winner it's going to sound, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Listen, see these, see these three notes. That, can you see my hand on the piano? Brianna? Yeah, I can see it. Can you see my hand on the piano? Yeah. Now watch. You know, if you were, if I were a violinist, watch, I would do one bow. is the bow see so on the piano that motion is like this look so in between the notes we're rising all the time watch and that's how you play legato on the piano try that for me Now, wait a second, wait. Get the finger incorrect. Four, two, one. Four, two, one. 
Now look, look, my wrist goes down on the G sharp. And before I play, I start to lift. Show me that, then you'll know everything about legato forever. Do that for me. No, no, sink, honey. Honey, the first note sinks to the bottom. Look, look at me. Look how far down I am. Now rise. No, you didn't continue up. You have to continue up. Watch me, watch me. Don't interrupt it. You do it faster. And I think you'll get it if you do it faster. No, sink to the bottom, honey. The last note went down again instead of up. The last note goes up. Sink, sink. No, sink and stay on the bottom. Sink. Honey. Now, let, come on, let's be practical. And you're going to do one note at a time. Look at here. See how low my wrist is? Now you just do that for me. No, no, start a little higher and swing down loud. Look, start higher and swing down. Louder. Much louder. Oh, the note isn't sounding. <laughs> the internet is not making it sound. Oh, my dear. Oh, how awful. That's not your fault. My volume is up all the way. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. That one note. Oh, now it's playing. Now, would you play, just keep your wrist low and don't move. Do this for me. And don't move. Now stay there, stay there. Now the next two notes are going to slowly rise with your wrist, do it. No, continue rising, honey. Continue rising until you play the last note. Sink. Sink on the G sharp. Now, can you control your wrist so that you don't get that high now? Please watch my wrist now. Can you watch me? You're kind of like away from the camera. Look, look. Let the neck go much faster now. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now add the left hand for me. You see the slur? 
those slurs mean always this wrist involvement. The wrist is going to do the legato. Can I hear you play these two notes for me? Like a sigh. Show me. Go down and then up. Louder. No, down, honey. Yes, now roll. That's the girl. You played a two note slur for the first time in your life now. Guess what? All two note slurs are like that forever. Now, come on, I have to help you in one place here because we can't do everything. I have to help you right here. Can I play hear that passage? Start right here. Okay, now hold the B as long as you can and then go fast. Now you see the little grace notes? They're, they're going to play together with the note that they're in front of. Do this for me. Let's hear the A and the G together, and then the F. No, uh, Brianna, the A and the G are going to be played together, and then the F. Do that for me. And the, and the next one is the same with one and three. So now do this for me. Now, look, I only want to hear you play two notes and then stop. Now, follow what I'm doing now. Stop. Now, put one and three down and go to D sharp. Exactly. So, two and three here and one and three here. Do them both. Correct. And now we put it together, it's gonna to sound like this. Can you try it? Play the B, play the B here. And now. Oh, it's, it's A and G. I told you to play G and F and that's a mistake. I'm sorry. Play A and G together. Play A and G together for me. And now play the F. 
the same. Are you going to play A and G together? Together? Let me hear you play A and G together. And now add the F. Listen to me. Correct. And now three and one. And the D sharp. And the D sharp. Okay, now we'll hear what it sounds like. Correct, correct. Okay, now here's what it's going to sound like when you play it in context. See, it's going to linger on the B, and then it's going to go fast. Hear that? So you have to practice that. Okay, that's all we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now here the blood. Yes, yeah, Seymour, I'm here. Hello, Seymour, can you hear me? Hello, can, can you hear me? We're having trouble here. Hello. Hello, I can't see you. Oh, um, I can see you and I can see myself. Okay, oh, that's good. Now, I want to make a suggestion on the opening of this piece. Sure. Could you start with your thumb on the E flat? And you're going to play the D with the left hand thumb. right hand alone. No, you're, you're not going to play the D. The left hand is going to play the D. Listen. Okay, now I think that that always sounds better than the way Chopin wrote it. Okay. 
the thing is that you play a nice sound for the B flat and then you start pianissimo. Now start pianissimo. And make a little crescendo. Can I see you do that? Now you see these two chords? They're a little curly cue to end the phrase. They're very insignificant, listen. It's asking a question. Now I'm going to play it for you. And the pedaling is very interesting. See, Chopin usually puts a lot of pedal marks in his music. He didn't put any pedal marks here at all until later. So of course, you know, we have to add the pedal. So I suggest that you do the following. Pedal. And I'm not going to change it until the next measure. And here I'm going to change it with a soft pedal. So listen. So it's stress and relaxation. So it's going to be now the left hand has the melody. What's happening? Now 
tell us what to do. See that hairpin? So what, what I'm showing you now, this is the romantic tradition. And it's lost now in this, gen this generation. You see, I, one of my teachers was Alexander Brailovsky, and he was the first pianist since the death of Chopin to play all of Chopin's works in public. So I inherited these traditions from Alexander Brailovsky mostly, and I'm passing them on to you. Did you enjoy listening to what I was demonstrating? Because it's a, it's a very exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Did you did you did you understand it? Yes, it's it's beautiful. I bet you did. I'm sure you did. Yes. So now, would you like to play it from the beginning and see what you got out of this mill? Sure, I'll try. No, too loud, too loud. Now when you do this, this is less. Now can you tell me why I'm telling you to play the C less than this? Why is this C less than the D flat? What's in the music that's making me tell you that? Do you see the slur over the tooth? Oh, yes. Do you see the long slur? Yes. Okay, if he started a new slur, we do this. But he didn't. That slur is the end of the phrase. So. demonstrate that for us now. See, this is an ending. This was the best phrase, this one. The C. You 
because the hairpin was right there. You did that perfectly. Okay, now we're, we can't do everything, honey, but there is very... The pedaling in Chopin is unique. He was the only person who spent a, a good deal of his creative life writing pedal marks. And I think that it's possible that a statement that I made in my, in my book about Chopin's interpretation, it's possible that I'm the only one on the planet who ever made the following statement. The asterisks in romantic music mean nothing at all. So I contend that the editors made the composers put in the asterisks because, you know, they didn't have the bracket pedal signs that we have today. They just had P-E-D asterisk. And the asterisks are always in the wrong place. So now listen to what I'm going to suggest now. When I discovered that that's really true, I realized that only the PED signs in Chopin are authentic. So from now, from when I realized that, I discovered Chopin's voice for the first time. Here's what I want to tell you to do. Put the pedal down every time you see PED and don't take it up no matter what until you see the next BED. Okay. All right? Cool. And I'm going to demonstrate it on the next main theme. Everybody plays it the way you did, like this. Pedal, 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 pedal. And that's not what he wrote. He wrote this. Pedal. That's what he wrote, and it's a totally different sound. So see, honey, what you're doing, if you analyze what you just did, you played every note the same dynamic. See, you're not, you're not experimenting. Look here. This is a melody that's falling, right? Listen. It's falling. And this is the afterthought. Yeah. 
as pessoas. that's not good right here from the E would you put the soft pedal on that measure the same soft pedal then it's going to be very hard problem do it No, you're going so you're playing every note the same dynamic it has to be a diminuendo now all together softer do that for me Yes, of course. See, see, I know that this, the internet is interfering with the dynamic. I, have real, I really do know that. I bet you were making a diminuendo, weren't you? Mm. Yeah, but you see, it doesn't sound that way. What can we do? That's, that's our modern technology. It's not perfect, is it? Mm. Maybe I can try it again. All right, so now, you know, there's this hidden voice that I heard you try to bring out, but it wasn't so successful. Let me find that place for this in a minute. Okay, when the theme comes back, you're right here. Turn the page right here. See, now look here. Left hand D, left hand E, left hand F. Now right hand G and left hand A. Left hand F, right hand G, left hand A. First listen with your, you have a wonderful ear. Hear that beautiful melody? Listen. Would you like to try that? Go slowly. Let's see if you can. Yes. Yes. 
So now, now put the soft pedal on this one. That's the afterthought. Wonderful, that's wonderful. Thank you. And by the way, your technique is brilliant in this piece. Thank you. Congratulations, you have you, you have a wonderful pianistic flair. Thanks. It's only in molding the sound that you need to really work hard at. Mm -hmm. So that's all we're going to do today. Thank you so much. Sir. And I want to discuss with some of you about how many of you have perfect pitch? Do you have perfect pitch, honey? Perfect pitch. Lulu? Is Lulu there? Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh. I have the absolute opposite of perfect pitch. I think perfect pitch. So how many of the students have perfect pitch? None of the above, unfortunately, Seymour. Yeah. None of the above. That's all right. That's good. I'm glad to know that. I don't have perfect pitch either. So now I discovered something about people with perfect pitch and memory. You know that when we John, get John says John says they're a pain in the ass, just so you know. <laughs> John says what? He says they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the pain in the ass? The people with perfect pitch. They can all <laughs> raise their hand now. <laughs> so I discovered something very interesting in my old age. That people with perfect pitch don't play from memory at all. They play with their ear. And they don't get as nervous as we do when we sit down. Because most nervousness comes from a fear of memory slips. What about so photographic memory, Seymour? What about photographic memory? What, that what helps a lot. There? Yeah. That helps very much. Do you have photographic memory? Clearly not. <laughs> OK. So here is my contention. I'm passing this on to everybody I know. You know that this whole manner of playing from memory started with Liszt and Clara Schumann. Before that time, nobody played from memory. So if you don't have, now listen carefully, if you don't have a good relative pitch, Having a good relative means pitch means this following. You can sing whatever you can sing, you can play at the piano. If you can't do that, I suggest that you never play from memory. However, you never know the piece thoroughly unless you memorize it. But then when it comes to playing in public, I suggest that you have the music in front of you. Because otherwise your ear is not functioning properly, see? And you have to compensate for it. This is my suggestion. 
And now I'm going to leave you with the following suggestion about how you practice. The first priority in practicing is your emotional response to the music. You have to plan what all the dynamics mean to you. They mean all, all kinds of personal emotional responses. And we're all different. We have different feelings about us. Of course, we can't play with our emotions alone. So we have to intellectualize and see that we know every mark on the printed page and what it means. Third, none of that is going to make you play beautifully. If you don't make a physical connection to what you're feeling, the piano won't respond to it. Got those three things in mind now? That's what you have to do when you practice. I loved working with all of you, and I hope to hear you in the future again, okay? Thank you, Seymour. I wanted to I'll let you know, I think we have a question or two from our audience. Would you be what? Uh, willing? Would you be willing to answer one or two? Of course. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, can you? We're, we're getting it queued up for you. I was just told. Are they going to speak? Well, or no? Uh, they're letting him talk or her talk. Okay. I guess they're not responding. Oh, maybe they, maybe they weren't expecting that. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, well, well, I don't th I don't think we have the question. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, regardless, um, I just wanted to thank you, Seymour. Thank you for uh, sharing your time with this group. I think everyone really appreciates this. Um, I certainly do, and uh, and it's it's great to see you know the the things that we work on in our lessons. You know, you know, the basics of phrasing and, and really, you know, articulating the structure of music, uh, you know, the way it's meant to be. Uh, I, I see all of that there. It's, it's, um, it makes me feel not so bad about when I spend a half an hour or more working on a pedal, uh, which isn't so, so easy, even though it seems like it should be. So uh, that's, that's, that comes with the territory. Yes. Um, yes. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you very mm -hmm. much, Seymour. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, s I'm sorry we had a little bit of technical difficulty with you earlier on, but I'm glad it worked out. The sound actually sounds a lot better as we went through this. I also want to thank the audience. And there's quite a few of you, and there were lots of chatting online, and I think they got a lot out of this session as well. So... Oh, we do have a question. All right. Can you see it? Can you read it? I can't see it. Here. How, okay. How did he hold the G down in the left hand if he let go of the pedal? Actually, that was a held note. Is that right, Seymour? That's supposed to be held by the left hand, finger pedaled, in the, the uh, waltz. Is that right, Seymour? Michael, are you talking to me? Oh, yes, I, yes I am. There was a question. I can't in the, the, oh, I'm sorry. I was behind the mic. This is a very directional mic. So there was a question about in the waltz that John was playing, uh, the, the G that was supposed to be held without the pedal. And I believe you, you basically took the right, the, with the right hand, the top note, so you could just hold it down like it was a held note. That's right? exactly what I did, yes. Right. Yet you're always telling me um, that everywhere you can um, hold notes, if you can, because that's what, Chopin, well, not everywhere, but Chopin was always holding notes. Now, all of Chopin's pupils wrote the same. The master is always holding notes down that were not written to be held. Well, you right. see, he, he couldn't hold them because he wrote them to, he had to get to the next chord. 
So if you have to redistribute the voices in order to do that, it's too complicated to write. So they just wrote down harmonically what seemed pleasant to the ear, to the eye rather. So you have to redistribute, you know, look here, look here. All of those moving voices are written in the bass cliff. Nobody plays them in the bass clef. We play them in the right hand. So when, whenever you can hold the bass note, redistribute the rest of the measure to enable you to do that. I think that's very good, helpful, uh, fundamental advice for the audience. I, it's all, well, it's, uh, there's a theme, and I think in what we've done generally, it's, you know, you know, in Chopin at least, right? The base, it's the architecture of the piece. So to let go of that. It's not only in Chopin, all of right. music is built mm -hmm. from the base up. Right. Here is Brahms on the subject. Give me a good melody and a base and I'll write the greatest composition. That's mm -hmm. what Brahms said. So all, all of Chopin comes from the bass note. I don't okay. think we have any more. I think the final round of applause for Seymour and the pianist. Thank you, all the pianists. It was wonderful. And thank you, especially Seymour. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Seymour. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.